Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dolbeck. Today we are going to speak about the best composition in Raid in New World Eternum. It's in Raid in general, but right now the Raid that is out, it's like the Gorgon one. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same for most of them. Maybe there's gonna be other Raid that are gonna be like more melee or more range. But for this one, there's a composition that could be the best and let's dive straight into it so let's start by the arch rune uh, the arch rune that are viable is fire kick vines and the cannon blast all right so what happened is th there's uh, some boss that have the stamina that can be breaking and the cannon blast do a big damage to the stamina so for the ranger dps that could be a good Thing to use because if they are getting too close and use a vine on the bus or something like that they have good chance to die so the fire kick the fire kick is amazing uh, you, you give empower to your teammate it does infant bling on the bus uh, and it give empower to yourself too so I feel like the the, the fire kick uh, the angry art are, are weak to fire kick too so you're gonna need a good amount of fire kick a good amount of vines too because the vine does a ran and enfeebling too so this is the two that you need the most for king and vine and then the third could be the uh, the cannon blast or else all right but the fire kick and vine could be the best only because it's angry earth and the fire king gonna do more dps than most of the arch rune and the fire kick does critical so yeah so uh the tank if you don't feel safe you can go stone form when i did it as a tank i used stone form but i only had one healer if you have two healer maybe you better not use stone form and help the dps because you may be gonna like dps and if you have two healer maybe you better go with the great sword instead of the armor too so since we already talked about the tank let's speak about the tank first it's it's like the the first role that is the most important enters only one into the raid so your tank gonna have a sns armor this is the base build but sns great sword could be better so you see sns great sword sns hatchet could be better than armor uh, i think that maybe we use armor just per habit uh, but uh, the great sword have a couple of good abilities that are good to tank with and you know if you can help a bit with the dps that's a good thing so yeah the blunderbuss maybe is usable for the tank 2 into this dungeon mostly if you use the stopwatch the stopwatch is like something that makes you not you don't need the carnian so you can put the fire gem so adding a blunderbuss for a tank with the fire gem could be a good thing all right so yeah if you're looking to just build a comp Having a tank with SNS and armor is the best thing. SNS great sword, you're fine. SNS actually too, right? So you want two either or one either. I've seen this dungeon made with one either, and it's possible. But it's possible with two too. But you need to use the void blade a lot, and uh, yeah, a lot of people just don't do it right. So you need to make it properly, and uh, yeah. So, and if you use the Void Blade, you need to put some intel, and it, you need to put a Ruby into your, your Void Blade, and you see, I have a good VG, you, there's a VG that drop with Rogue on it, uh, if you don't have, like, some perk like Vicious or Rogue, uh, Enchanted, uh, it's not gonna hit really hard, uh, and Rogue really does difference, so, yeah. You want your two healer to like kind of void blade. Uh, there's one that is gonna more like be constantly healing, and the other gonna be constantly void blading and just pulling it out where you can. So the one that is constantly constantly healing is almost better to go mostly all AOE. Maybe have one second target, and the other that is gonna be uh, is gonna be more support. Is gonna be like splash of light, single target, and and sacred. Since since this dude job is gonna be to heal the DPS that's gonna be far behind and close to the tank, so he's gonna be able to just splash it. And then 
you, you're gonna put this healer with the ranged DPS if possible so he's gonna be able to clap and heal them and single target them and the other one that is with the tank into the group you're gonna put it with the melee DPS all into the same group so you're gonna be able to heal them kinda easy but remember one thing your tank is gonna have the leadership and power so the people into the group of the tank need to be able to benefit of the empower like the people with the rapier uh, the spear and stuff like that that need empower all right so yeah um what i think is you're gonna need one tank two healer and there's one of the healer that can just dps and use the dps weapon and swap for the last boss or whatever you feel the best with it but you, you keep two slots for the, the healer, one slot for the tank, then there's gonna be 7 DPS, 3 melee and 4 ranged. Uh, the 3 melee gonna be 2 spear great sword, and the other is gonna be a rapier, rapier VG probably, you see. Because rapier IG is not really good uh, into this dungeon because they are angrier, and uh, rapier scale of int and dex and that does the vg gonna do the the ig gonna do the only ps and you need some empower with the rapier and the empower you're gonna get it from the vg all right so why the spear great sword because the spear gonna do the the enfeebling and gonna do the rend and it's the one of the easiest weapon to use and it does a lot of dps and what happened with the spear is your dps can have a full set of harnessing yes fire harnessing and they're gonna have a fire gem into their their spear and they're gonna hit clung, clung, clung really hard and they're gonna have a great sword with it and when they're gonna pull the great sword they're gonna hit very hard and when it's the last boss you're gonna need the great sword just to destroy the eggs you're gonna see there's some eggs that are really hard to to destroy with most of the weapon but with the great sword for some reason you can hit them really hard so this is why i think you have two great sword requirement and you're almost better to use the spear with it because almost all other weapon as a combo is not really good i tried with the even the great sword hatchet is more like a pvp build uh yes you can throw your hatchet but it does so such a low dps to do the hatchet throw that you are almost better to let the ranged dps do the ranger DPS and you as a melee, you're gonna focus on your melee role. And yeah, you, you're you gonna like, you better to each one have your role and focus fully into it. Be pure into your role than being a jack of all trade and being a loser into it, all right? So this is it for the DPS. Like I say, great sword spear, two time and rapier, um, you want it with the VG. Yes, you can have something like a SNS hatchet or something like that. But uh, you, believe me, you gonna have a way easier time to pass this, this dungeon. If you have two dudes with serenity in their end. And on the, on the other end they have like um, a rogue uh, and like skewer spear. Like... There's just no way to, to, to beat the DPS of that almost. Uh, like there's great sword, great axe, but you don't need the great axe in this one. So you better with the spear because you're gonna have the fortify perforate to save your life and the skewer to save the tank life, All right? So uh, the ranged DPS, what I think about the fire staff, it's one or two max. But I think the sweet spot would be one fire staff max. And I hate to say it because I'm a main fire staff, you see what I mean? But the reality is still the reality. And then uh, the fire staff is almost better to run a blunderbuss, right? Uh, as a of end, because the other of end are not really good for the fire staff uh, into this dungeon anyway. Uh, let's take let's take the the rapier as example. The rapier is gonna scale off int and dex so if you use the rapier it's bad and um, the blunderbuss have some fire attack so when you use it it's like really good even if you use int um, because of the grenade on the floor 
But yeah, at that point, if you really want to play Fire Staff, you better to just use the Fire Staff and easy attack the whole time with it and never pull your secondary armors because uh, you don't need any empowerment, so the, the Void Gauntlet gonna be useless. If you pull out the the, the Blunderbuss, you're gonna put yourself in trouble. And if you want, really want to play with the Blunderbuss, you better go with a real Blunderbuss build almost like uh, with a mid strength mid uh, int and low con and then you have a vg with it that would be insane like uh, but blunderbuss for yourself is still the above very good because you see you need ranged dps and i did a build to make it viable and you can complete the dungeon with it for sure all right so the musket with the void gun led you need to make sure that your musket user is using a ruby into his musket for sure and with a uh, void gauntlet, there's no reason to use anything else than a void gauntlet. Uh, like, uh, it just would make no sense. I've seen some people using uh, rapier, you can do it for fun. But uh, I'm not, I don't think this is optimized because with the rapier, you need a void gauntlet. Like, to make the rapier better, you need a void gauntlet to empower the rapier. And it's the same for the the musket. When you're not into the fire, the shooting stance, you want the the void gauntlet to make it stronger. You have the oblivion and the tether, and then you're probably empower cap without the shooting stance. So you you're gonna just alternate between both and always be um, empower cap. So it's the same for the bow with the, the void gauntlet. It just makes no sense to have another off and and you want your bow user to have ruby. Uh, the opposite as the bow, uh, as the musket, is the bow gonna be everything in Dex almost, and uh, yeah, like maybe a bit somewhere else, uh, like maybe a bit of int or something, because you're gonna have a gem in his bow, you're gonna have a ruby in his bow, and maybe with some int, you're gonna gain a bit of DPS on the bow uh, because of the elemental damage or something like that. But uh, having a bow in your in your squad with 500 and then the rest and con would, would not be too bad. Uh, seriously, uh, musket and bow, I think, could be both really good. So, the last one, like I said, just before the blunderbuss. I think having a blunderbuss is not a requirement, but it, it makes your group stronger. You you, point, you take a dude who's like 50 con and like his blunderbuss is like... Like, he have 200 strength and the rest in intel and this dude is just hitting like a truck. This blunderbuss build is crazy. So, yeah. So, my 4 ranged DPS is gonna be 4 different ranged DPS. Why? Because if you look at the fire staff, you can have 5 fire stack at the same time. And if you have 2 fire mage in the same group, it's still 5 fire stacks. So, they are trading the same stack so it make it less stronger so it's why i recommend to have one fire staff one musket one bow and one blunderbuss and those four gonna be your like your four ranged and then you you have three melee and then you have your your total roll your total roll but yeah the ranged dps are really important you can have two fire staff blunderbuss uh, but I think one musket with ruby and one bow with ruby uh, maximum. You can have two musket with ruby or like two bow with ruby, but like uh, not more than that. I feel like it's too much. Uh, you don't need that much than that to just destroy the flower on the top uh, during like the ads phase and the, the new boss uh, or anything like that. So the ice gauntlet sadly is not really good into this dungeon. I really like this weapon since the start of the game I've been using it. But if it's not good, I'm not using it. And the ice gauntlet is just not doing it into this dun this raid. And the flail is the same. Like uh, you can use it to tank, but why use it? Why using a flail to tank if the flail do no DPS? It just makes no sense. And I tried it as a healer. It kind of worked as a healer. The only problem is, once again, you do more DPS with the Void Blade. So you better to just pull out a Void Blade and fuck, go all in with the Ruby and throw your Void Blade and some int. The Flail is like hitting with the pillow and this is not what you want in PvE. 
So yeah, this video is far enough like that. Maybe I'm gonna make a second one like this. If you like this type of video, just tell me into the comment section. Sub for more. I wish you a good day. Say, tell someone you love them. Peace out.